Welcome to Living Lit, where conversations spark inspiration to live in truth. Journey together with us to explore what it means to live a liturgical life and walk in the truth of our faith. Let's instill a culture in our hearts, homes, families, and world, living a life cooperating with and walking alongside our Lord. I'm Robin Brueggemann. Let's be a light, share the light, shine the light, and live lit. In the studio today, I have one of my friends, Father Zach Schaefbauer. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get through shows together without laughing or turning a little bit crazy. But So Father is a friend of our family, and I have known Father since he was in seminary. So this has been really fun. So um, Father Zach, it's funny because I look at you and some, like if I think of our relationship, I feel like sometimes I'm your mom, sometimes I'm your sister, sometimes I'm your friend, sometimes I'm like a parishioner. So we have an it's, interesting it, relationship, don't we? It's as if I'm a priest. Yes, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of satisfy all the roles. Yeah, yeah. So Jeez it's been Louise. so fun. We have, um, our family's been with you on the journey since mm -hmm. you, uh, since before you became a deacon, I think. And then the you um, mm -hmm. were a deacon, and then we were with you as you finished up seminary, um, even got to go visit you there. Um, and it was so fun. I feel like you really became part of our family because it was like we adopted you, we prayed for you through seminary and just kind of followed you along. And then we were part of your ordination into becoming a priest, which we are just so filled with joy and so thankful that you've answered that call. So um, we have a lot of fun memories with you and... Yeah, we're just thankful you're part of the family. Should we show someone a little bit of the fun that you get to have with our family? Can Casey pull it up, or is it too soon? So Father um, Zach, we met him because Father Tony was like, hey, I have this seminarian. Can we bring out to the farm? And I was, I'll be honest, at first I was like, oh, I don't know. And But I was like, okay, we trust Father Tony. We'll see what kind of a punk he's bringing out. Just kidding. Well, that makes, that makes <laughs> Makes one of us trusting Father Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. So anyways, that we said yes, and it just opened the door to so many fun memories with you guys and with you um, alone too. And so you've lived liturgical, so lit liturgical with us as a family a lot. You get in on a lot of our craziness. So I think we should show a video, and if people are listening to the podcast, they might have to pull this up. And this is one of the more fun um, things that we did. So last year you... And Father Tony, we're out for the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we decided, I had yeah, seen where you can take a strawberry <coughs> and you can take the center out. So if, if you want to see this, you got to be watching right now. We have a video. Like so we saw where you could take the center oh, out of a strawberry. And the strawberry looks like a heart. So it represents the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You fill the inside oh, with vodka right. and it starts on fire. So we were doing yeah, like a little yeah. experiment at supper one night. And yeah, um, so Father Zach is getting to um, to be the experimenter well, here with the flame. Well, and we were, we got, we got it to work. Nice. Oh, if you're watching, we got it. We got, we got like it to resemble fluid? the sacred heart of Jesus. The sacred heart set on fire with the flame. So that was one of the more fun. Well, I mean, I think that's we lots of fun. Can we narrow it down? Although I think there's there's a... A real case we made that we just douse that in gasoline next time. Yeah, next time. Next time we'll try the gasoline <laughs> because we clear. can only get the blue flame. <laughs> and so we were struggling. But anyway, so we have a lot of fun together and I'm, I'm just so thankful. So I've been just really excited to have you come on the show because you are also, you are so smart. You play hard and you pray, pray hard. I love that about you. You... You and Father Tony, I've had Father Tony on too. Like you show my kids how much fun priesthood can be, that you can play hard. You are super athletic, um, but you have this mind that just I just watch and just think wow it's amazing the way you you love reading and learning especially things like from Thomas Aquinas and I find that so hard but I'm so drawn to it so I just love that about you that you have that play hard pray hard and your your intellectual mind is just really deep so I've been excited to have you come on um, and talk about a couple different things but one of the things that I want to talk with you about that's come up because I asked you can we could talk about a zillion things you and I could, of course we could. zillions of things <laughs> so, together trying to keep um, it narrow we had to narrow it down so I asked father um, Zach I'm like well what what are some of the things you love to talk about and um, liturgical prayer I think is kind of what we kind of narrowed it down to right um, and how to participate in mass so this question is posed then why do we need to go to Mass if we get nothing out of it? So that's what we're going to talk about today. You're going to kind of answer that, and we're going to kind of walk through that. 
So will you set the stage first, though, in how did this come up? So you just recently gave a homily on this. Actually, where are you even at? I need to back up. I'm so used to being around you that I forgot <laughs> to say, where can we find Father Zach? Father Zach, introduce yourself. <laughs> As a mother, I'm saying, I was going to say, <laughs> hello, Living Lit audience. Uh, <laughs> As Robin so brilliantly put it, Father Zach Schaefbauer. I'm currently assigned to Holy Spirit and St. Dominic's in Canton. Uh, so Pastor 23, the Good Shepherd Pastorate uh, on the southeast side of Sioux Falls uh, and beyond, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting my third year there. And tell people where you're from. Where's your hometown? Do I have to? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. Uh, so I grew, up, I grew up in Mobridge, South Dakota. And we moved to Aberdeen, South Dakota. When I was a freshman in high school, attended Aberdeen Ron Colley Catholic School System there. And from there, I entered the seminary and was sent to St. Thomas um, at St. John Vianney College Seminary to study philosophy. And then Bishop Swain sent me to Rome uh, at the North American College to finish my theology. Um, did a one year stint at St. Paul Seminary that last year. COVID kind of messed a lot of things up for the world. Yeah. myself included um, and then I ended up at Holy Spirit that's where Bishop assigned me Bishop de Groot signed me the for my first assignment and it's been a great yeah. great blessing being there. there's a lot of work it's very busy um, but it's a it's a growing parish it's an active parish in that regard mm-hmm. um, so I get a lot of work a lot of sacramental work which has been <clears throat> um, it's been really uh, it's been really good practical work because it gets you uh, out of the mind, right? So eight years of seminary is very uh, heavy in formation, both of myself, but also of our mind. Um, as you can imagine, studying philosophy and theology, you get kind of lost in the clouds quite often. Um, and so what it allowed me to do, or it's still allowing me to do, and I hope it does for the rest of my priesthood, is um, I get to apply the knowledge I received and see, okay, what all knowledge is good, especially in the, <laughs> in the realms that I study. Um, but what knowledge is applicable to the faithful in front of me as well? Because as I try to remind people often enough, good theology, good philosophy also has some, some sort of practical applicability as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Although there are some, there's some room obviously for speculation, but anyways, so with Holy Spirit being super, super busy, there are uh, countless opportunities for me to, I guess, test that theory to say, all right, this is what we've been taught, or this is what I think and how to, how to understand this theology or this philosophy. And, Here's the situation in front of me. What works? <laughs> mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So, yeah, you are wise beyond your years. I've probably told you that. Um, and like I said, that's what I just love how you, your mind just thinks in that way with the philosophy and the theology, just all of these things. And you are able to so beautifully relay that to us lay people. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's a gift you have and that I am thankful to be on a receiving end of that, whether it's in our talks or if I hit Holy Spirit every once in a while for a homily. So what we're going to talk on today then is, you know, why do we need to go to Mass if I get nothing out of it? And this is something that then you and I talked about behind the scenes, but will you tell us how did this even come up that you knew that, well, I mean, you, you know that people obviously have this question. It's not uncommon mm-hmm. for people mm-hmm. to feel this way yeah but how did it come up for you Well, and i think you're absolutely right <clears throat> it's probably been a question i asked myself uh mm-hmm. growing up is you know i get nothing out of mass why do i have to go i would say on my end um start i really loved alt serving so mm-hmm. i was always happy to go to mass because i never if got you bored were a server. <laughs> i never got <laughs> bored <laughs> um <clears throat> But it's a, it's a question that comes up repeatedly to you know Catholic parents, uh, school teachers, priests, um, and and it comes from a variety of ages, young and old, all ask the question. You know why do I have to go to mass if I get nothing out of it? And usually, in my my opinion, in the back of their mind is um, you could say the a non denominational ideal of worship, this idea that. It's got to be music that entertains me. It's got to be a homily that's intriguing and draws me in or uh, makes me even, in a sense, feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to impose a judgment in that regard, but that just I feel like that's in the back of people's minds when they're thinking of going to Mass. Um, But you encounter it all the time as a priest. And 
it, it was a question that came up in the midst of seminary, first of all, as I delved into uh, my own personal liturgical studies, so particularly liturgical history, um, liturgical theology and spirituality, what does that all look like, how does it manifest itself, um, and it's something I've held in the back of my mind for quite some time because, you know, a question that's been in the church since the Second Vatican Council is active participation. How do people participate in Mass? Um, and I've come across some answers, and I thought, okay, well, maybe maybe this could provide some sort of a solution to people. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I think it was when I got to the parish that it became more evident that this needed to be understood better. Um, it was in my mind, but as I, you know, underwent tons of confessions, people complaining to me, people seeking help from me, just greeting people after Mass, a common thread occurred from two spectrums. One was, the one we just talked about, I get nothing out of Mass, why do I have to go? On the other end, it was, Father, I try to participate as much as I can at Mass, and yet I get distracted, or I try... I really, really try to enter into it, I still get nothing out of it. Both ends are asking the same question, though. How do I get something out of Mass? Why do I have to go to Mass uh, if, if I get absolutely nothing from it, if I receive nothing from it? So that's kind of how the question came into my mind. I thought, well, i got to preach on this at some point. <laughs> you know, I think this would be a pretty good topic to talk about since it's pertinent to every walk of life in the church. So I don't know. How do you want to go from there? So tell us, <laughs> what, tell us what you said. What you know? What is? How would you answer that? How do you know? If I'm the one coming to you, Father, I'm getting nothing out of Mass. Why do I even need to go? Well, I'll just give the summary, and then I can explain the parts. How yes, that sound? please. <clears throat> so if you ask the question to yourself, how do I get something out of Mass? The answer is simple. Quit trying. Stop trying to get something out of Mass. We have to keep this in mind is the Mass is not about me, it's not about you, it's not about us, it's not about the community, it's about God. It's the worship of God. It's never, ever about us. It's hmm. always about the worship of God. So once I start asking the question, well, what am I receiving out of this? How, what am I getting out of this? You've now missed the point because hmm. you're, you're taking away from the worship of God. So it's an oxymoronic or you could say even a <clears throat> counterintuitive answer. The less I try to get out of Mass, the more I will get out of Mass. So quit trying and just show up. Be present. Give God your heart. Offer your prayers. And then just enter into the ritual. Allow the church to pray for you. Because in a real sense, the prayer of the Mass is not my prayer. It's not your prayer. It's not the community's prayer. It's the prayer of Christ between him and the Father in union with the Holy Spirit. And so in a real way, we are participating in the prayer of Jesus Christ, the perfect prayer. So in a, so like I try to explain to people, let God provide. Let him pray for you and stop worrying about getting something out of it. You can do that in your own personal prayer. Yeah. <laughs> right? so, it's, so the first step you would say is to just show up without yeah. the expectation of getting, something. of getting something out of it. Yeah, and right. then being ready to receive. Or would you say that? Or just participate? Just so participate. Just, just participate. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and by participate, I mean... Yeah, not receive. What am I getting out of it? Not... Yeah. I said that wrong. And we should probably clarify because participation for people can be kind of convoluted or misunderstood. So here's two scenarios I'll present to you, Robin. Yes. And I'll ask it to you in a question format and you can answer, okay? But this is to help us get a baseline of what participation actually means. And from there, we can build up how to better approach the mass. <clears throat> I'm kind of nervous. Can I answer incorrectly? Yeah, of course. Most oh, people God. do. Oh, <laughs> God. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> in scenario one, we have a, um, a lifelong Catholic who shows up to Mass. He uh, had a pretty crazy week. Um, work was busy, busy weekend, had to take care of his kids, so they finally show up, and he kneels before Mass to offer a prayer. He says, oh, Lord, you know, I'm so, so tired. I don't know what to pray for. So he finishes that, he sits down, and incidentally he falls asleep and sleeps through the whole Mass. And he's only awakened by the last song because the organ's blaring, and he's like, oh my gosh, that's the end of Mass, priest possessing out. That's scenario one. On the other hand, scenario two, you have uh, this, this lady who is interested in Catholicism, and not only that, she is not even baptized, right? So she's your traditional 
pagan, if you will, unbaptized. But she's very curious. A friend invited her to Mass, so she shows up. She kind of follows what a friend does, genuflects to get into the pew. Not sure why, but she does it. She's handed a book. She follows the words. She's listening. She sings the songs to the best of her abilities. She just does what everybody else does, <clears throat> um, except for receive communion because her friend mm-hmm. tells her not to. Good friend. <laughs> um, and then she goes upon her merry way after Mass is done. So, Robin... Which of those two participated in Mass? That's a tricky one because I feel like the the sleepy, tired dad, he started and kind of told God where he was at. He fell asleep, but that might have been what the Lord was going to do with him during that Mass. I don't know. But I don't know. Can they have a tie? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> there's, there's, actually, know, there's, actually because, a, there's actually a right answer to this. Because, like, the gal who's not Catholic and is participating in a lot of different ways, that's really something, too. So I don't know. I'm torn. 50-50 shot. Take a stab. I'm going to say A because I feel like that's the unlikely answer. <laughs> I don't know. Which one is it? Did I flunk? Oh, no, you looked at me like Robin. That was the wrong answer. No, no. So the man who fell asleep during Mass was the one that participated. Oh, so I did get it. I win. <clears throat> yeah, you okay. got it. Yay. You got it. But I, I thought that just because it seemed like the unlikely one. So of I course. Like yeah, most question. people think about that. <laughs> so right there, what it portrayed, the, the, the key uh, distinguishing factor uh, was the fact that the woman coming to Mass was not baptized. Oh. That's the key. Oh. Whereas the man coming to Mass was baptized. He's a lifelong Catholic. Okay. So participation begins on the sacramental level, meaning you have to be baptized. And so long as you are baptized, you are now a part of the body of Christ. And where is the body of Christ? It's in heaven. Forever united to the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. Okay? And if that's where the body is, it's in that loving union with the Father and the Spirit, and the Spirit that perpetual sacrifice, the one sacrifice offered once and for all for sin. So the Mass is the manifestation of that prayer. Mm-hmm. And the only way you can participate in that, first and foremost, is by being baptized. Hmm. So from that understanding of the sacramental worldview, we can then build up from there how to participate in Mass. Are you going to tell us how that would be then? Yeah. Because I'm just like, you, I'm, you, I was you not just, expecting you, yeah, the beginning yeah. part of that. Yeah, you just show up. <laughs> Well, yeah, you told That's us that. That's it. Because now this well, is where I'm trying. Okay. I'm gonna try to. Casey's av- laughing because he's like, "You already knew this, Robin, right?" I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to like. I'm gonna that try was to what your look to me lost. was like, Robin. <laughs> okay, we can't make eye contact. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try avoid getting lost in my like, kind of the theological weeds yeah. here for a moment. But to put it simply, um, although the mass as a prayer is primarily happening within the divine Trinity, <clears throat> its manifestation still happens in time and space at the Mass and the sacraments. So a person who reasonably can make it to Mass that's baptized, that doesn't attend Mass, in that sense does not participate in the prayer of Christ, the Holy in the prayer of the Divine Trinity, the offering of the sacrifice. Why? Because the Mass is a spatial temporal reality, meaning it's confined to time and space. It has to happen in a physical context. Okay? So you have to be physically present in order to then benefit from this physical context. Which would be why reality. we need to go to Mass. Which is why I need to go to Mass. So that's why the baseline then is, okay, are you baptized? Good, now just show up. Okay, from there, we can then ask, what's next? I'll sleep for all I care. How many priests will say that? None. Sleep during Mass. <laughs> I, know, I, was like, I mentioned that in Muhammad. I said, this is kind of dangerous, I think. And it's not to go up and say, I'm just going to sleep intentionally. Right, yeah. But it's... As you offer up your mind, your heart, your soul, okay, um, and you happen to fall asleep. Like example A. Yeah, like example A. <laughs> All right, that. don't worry about it. Are you go- Do you want to sing at Mass? Sing. Do you not want to sing at Mass? Don't sing. Do you want to kneel? Kneel. Do you want to sit? Sit. Huh. Okay. Do you have to take care of a screaming baby? Okay. Show up and then take care of the baby. Right? There's a lot of times where people say, well, I don't want to go to Mass because we have to take care of kids. Like, Take care of kids at Mass. Yeah. The point is just to be there. Yeah. Okay, then, then that, that builds up. So I'm not saying people shouldn't participate in the second sense we talked about, where you go through the actions and the motions and stuff. <clears throat> but the Mass is not primarily about the actions of, well, 
the priest of the life faithful. I'm not going to talk about the priest stuff because that gets a little fuzzy. But the point is to allow the ritual of the mass to consume you, or in a real sense, assume you. Um, allow your senses to get lost in the foray of signs and symbols, the beauty of vestments, the beauty of the music. Okay, This is also why when people say, well, I never understand the language. If, they, if someone speaks, if they chant Latin. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's not the point. It's not about understanding the language. It's good if you want to understand it, go ahead. But allow the mystique, allow the ritual to like impact your senses, your eyes, your nose, smell the incense, yeah. taste taste communion, right? Or even just taste the environment, if you will. Like a church kind of smells different, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, listen, be attentive to the best of your abilities. But you don't have to necessarily do the actions. Why? Because that's priest, primarily the priest's job hmm. is to do the ritual aspect. Now, what's the spiritual side of this then? As I mentioned at the end, it's because this the Mass is not my prayer. It's not my time for personal devotion or private initiative. It's the prayer of Christ and his church, his body. Why is that important? Because it means when I go to Mass, it's as if, like, if this is me, <laughs> I come to Mass, it's as if Christ stands in my place and prays for me. Not as the wow. intention, but as the agent, meaning his power is now at work in me in the most perfect way possible. So no matter what I'm doing within reason, the prayer is happening and I'm benefiting. So do you, so then, okay. Cause so, if, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I say, cause the point there is like, I call it the substitution theory, liturgical substitution theory of participation. Explain. <laughs> me when Christ basically, is basically like, standing. It's like, you, it's you substitute Christ. We still exist and we matter. But if I start saying, what am I getting out of it? You almost reject Christ's ability to come and work through you. Wow. Right. But if you're focused on just being present participating to however degree you need to or want to, then Christ is allowed to take your place. Wow. And pray through you. Yeah. In a better, more perfect, more perfect, more profound way than any personal prayer you could ever offer at any point in your life. That's why it's so primary that people go to mass. Yeah. Because it sets the tone not for the rest of the week, but it is the very thing that enlivens the Christian spirit because it is the spirit of Christ. Yeah. That kind of just has me like speechless. That was really powerful and deep. That's Justina's new thing. That's so deep. <laughs> of course it is. So, um, <laughs> knowing Justina. Um, so, I guess what I was thinking when you were saying that is how, like, I have found when I, if I prepare before attending Mass, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's sure. say, um, we try to, as a family, always read the scripture readings beforehand so that we can enter in a little bit deeper. And then also try to um, come prepared with what I can then offer to mm -hmm. God when I mm -hmm. come to Mass, yep. different intentions. So how, help me understand, like, yeah. you, like, yes, that's, that's still good, mm -hmm. yep. but how does that play in with well, because this then? Yeah. then like, it, because then Christ already knows. Like, if I'm like, because I love that visual. If I could picture me coming to Mass and letting Christ be in my place, the substitute theory, right? If I do that, then I don't need to worry so much about coming with my intentions because he already knows them. Or do I, I, I would still, say, I would say don't, or I would both say, and? I would say maybe there, if the, the fear is worry and concern, because a common thing I get from people is, I mean, unfortunately, the confessional, too, is they, they, they say, I got distracted during Mass. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, for the most part, that's not intentional. Most people don't just intentionally get distracted at Mass. Right. They actually, since they're there, they're going to try to pay attention. Right. But what usually happens is, I got distracted at Mass. Oh, my goodness, I screwed up. Or I had an intention. I can't remember the intention. And because I can't remember the intention, it's not going to get offered. Right. No. Right. The point is, any preparation that you do... Obviously, it's going to benefit you, right? It's going to say, okay, I'm bringing these intentions to my mind, these affections, my concerns, my joys, my th gratitude. I'm bringing it to Mass, and they might still be on your mind while you're there, and that's that's okay. That's totally fine. Um, but what I mean is when Christ takes your place, it doesn't negate everything that you have. What it mm -hmm. does is he takes it for you and does it perfectly. Yeah. 
So if you get distracted during Mass by accident, so like Holy Spirit, our church is built in the round. Mm -hmm. So for those of you at home, that means everyone's facing each other yeah. around the altar. It's an interesting layout. <laughs> um, it's a little distracting. But and, and in a real way, I actually mean it is distracting because yeah. people will say that, oh, yeah, I was able to, I was praying just fine, whatever that means, and then baby starts screaming. Yeah, or you see someone across <clears throat> the way someone faints. facing you. Or, or yeah. someone, yeah. you're like, oh, I recognize them, and then you get distracted. Mm -hmm. Well, then they kind of scourge themselves interiorly, saying, well, now mm -hmm. I'm not praying, I'm not participating properly, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, now you're focused too much again on yourself. Mm. So what you do is you bring all that beforehand, and as Christ reminds us in the scriptures, we don't need to babble like the pagans do. So once I've brought my intention once, I don't have to repeat it because it's been said. It's spoken. Huh. And God remembers yeah, it. Of course he does. Right? Yeah. So... We bring it to, I would say, the preparation work that you're talking about is good insofar as it brings to your heart and your mind, uh, your memories, your experiences, your hurts, your failings, your joys, your successes, your gratitude, your ingratitude, whatever it may be. And that's good and healthy for you both from a psychological and human perspective. Right? But once you bring that and you say, Lord, I offer this up to you in the Mass, or if you can't think of anything and just say, I'm here, now Christ takes your place and perfects it. No matter what happens to you during Mass, whether it is you fall asleep, you follow all the actions, you sing, you don't sing, whatever, right? Then Christ takes over. But the only he can take over is if you show up and stop looking at yourself. Yeah. That's beautiful. I was totally not, I was not expecting that. Like, I don't know. Like, I think I thought that I thought, I thought I knew you, what you might say with some of that, but that is so neat to hear it almost like it takes some of the pressure off, but I do think, like, in my head, I'm also feeling like a person has to be careful hearing that and knowing that, don't we? Like, without making it about ourselves, okay? So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, we have to be yep. careful then not to be the looking interiorly and self-focused because then we're, we go back to the, I'm not getting stuff out of it. But how we, like, it takes all the pressure off, but how to not let that... Um, I don't want to say be like a free card. You know what I'm saying? Like well, that yeah, balance between the two of, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like I, would, I don't mean that I would, in a mean say, or bad way, but I'm but just drinking not, practical. That's not really a balance because once the person going to mass says, well, I'm just going to sleep because I want to. Right, yeah. Right, well, that's now, not good. Then they've yeah. gone back to what am I getting out of it? Right, right. Strictly speaking. Yeah. There is no, there's no need to balance. So it's like showing up without the stress of, like you said like in the beginning. pressure of trying to get something yeah, out of it. you don't have to get something out of it. Just Just be. enter. And then let God yeah. take so over. So participate Picture. to the, basically it would be, say, I would say, if you want to use a balanced approach, participate to the best of your abilities. Yeah, and but, it doesn't need to be balanced. I probably should have said yeah, that, but, but, but I think, I'm just thinking of a listener, what someone might be thinking. Or, now, I might, this might be a contentious point here <laughs> to a lot of my brother priests and bishops out there. <laughs> um, but <laughs> the participation of the laity is important as the body of Christ. I'm not denying that, right? Even yeah. canon law says that if technically speaking, if a priest celebrates mass, there's supposed to be at least one other person present. But okay. he can still do mass by himself because technically every single offering of the mass is offered with the whole church because, again, right. it's the prayer of Christ. Right. But the actions, whose actions actually matter are the priests. Who is in place of Who's in of the, the Christ. place of Christ. Exactly. So you can show up and sing and do all the right actions and stuff, but if I show up and screw up the words of consecration, Mass doesn't happen. Interesting. If I yeah, show up, that's true. if I'm doing Mass and I, let's say, before I consume the Blessed Sacrament, I die on the spot and there's no priest available to actually consume the Blessed Sacrament, Mass doesn't yeah, happen. There's no Mass. Right? So we, the balance there is probably alleviating, like, or stepping back from this whole notion that your participation matters. I know it sounds really bad. <laughs> it does. Don't take this wrong. I know. Please don't take this the wrong way. I don't mean it in the sense of like, oh, this is a clericalist view. No, no, no. Yeah. It's, 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 no. It does matter because you need to be there because you're yeah. baptized. Yeah. You are a member of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But in another way, you don't need to be there. But you do. Okay. But you don't. Your, 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 your actions are not what make the mass the mass. That's the action of Christ manifested through his priest and the ritual of the church. Yeah. So enter into the best of your abilities. So this is, mm -hmm. it's not until after the Vatican Council, the Second Vatican Council, and the, uh, the work of the Concilium afterwards, that rubrics for the lay faithful began to appear. Hmm. Throughout all church history, there was never any guideline or rubric 
for how to participate in the Mass as a layperson. And part of that was because they don't need to. Yeah. They just need to be present. So you, this is, I mean, you can go, there's so many things you can go on, build off of here. Like the, the existence of pews didn't come till really later in the church. So people in the early basilicas just kind of walked around. They'd kneel, they'd sit, they'd kind of get as close as they wanted to, they'd say as far away as they wanted to, right? They would just be immersed in the liturgical spirit, if you will, by just being present. And then you did what you did. Huh. And if you wanted to follow along with the priest, you could. And if, if you didn't, well, at least you're there and you're not, you're not trying to ignore God, but you're just saying, I just got to pray a different way right now. Yeah. Now I would say one last balance thing, if you will. Someone did bring this up like, well, Father, what if I just want to talk during Mass? I said, well, you got to remember, though, it's a communal event. And it's about the worship of God. So if you mm-hmm. want to talk during Mass, that's a problem because <laughs> it's not yeah. about you. Yeah. But two, since Mass happens within a congregation, if you talk, you will take away from the participation of others. Right. Um, and so there is definitely like a, uh, a communal aspect as well. You have to keep in mind that, yeah. yeah if everyone's sitting, standing, and kneeling, and I decide to stand while everyone's kneeling, okay, you may have that quote-unquote right, but you're gonna probably piss off a lot of people, right? <laughs> and it's or just or it's gonna be really, it's gonna be also, it's gonna be awkward yeah, because it's yeah. it goes against uh, you could say the Catholic cultural norms at that point. Right, right. If you were in a church that had no pews, then by golly, go ahead and stand if you want. If you don't want to kneel, right? So that's so interesting. Yeah, that that yeah. there's there's a lot of things we could we could speak to as a consequence of this but but i i I would say that if i could put it all nice and neat yeah put it in a little nice wrap package for us i'll try (laughs) 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 the point of participation is primarily to be present with christ so he can work through you because the mass being the prayer of the church is not about me or my personal prayer well, my personal holiness, actually, so if you're in the state of sin, you still have to show up. It's not even actually about me receiving communion. Okay, that's the thing that gets overplayed a lot. I got to be at a mass because I need to receive communion. Actually, no, you don't, because if you're in the state of sin, you can't receive communion. Mm-hmm. It's the priest's communion that actually matters for the sacrifice of the mass. But that's by the by. Show up, be present, offer your mind and heart to God to the best of your abilities, and just get lost in the mass, however that mm-hmm. comes about. I love that. Get lost in the ma- in the mass. And in my head, what I'm thinking all of this sums up to is less of me, more of him. I must decrease, he must increase is yep. really what it comes down to. Not taking myself out of the picture and just letting Christ. Right. No. I would even qualify that a little bit. But oh, yeah, you're goodness. right. You're, you're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I can tell but, by but, at but, you but even even people thinking like, well, I have to sit there and focus on God the whole time. Well, that can actually be a way of me introspecting too much. Oh, right? wow. So I'm like trying to sit there and think about God. I'm like, I, why can't I keep my focus on God? Why can't I keep okay, my focus on God? Yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying? I see. So you're that's saying. the other end. Remember I said there's two ends, two extremes. Most yeah, people fall yeah. on the end of like, I don't want to be there because I get nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. There's that other end that they try so hard to focus that yeah. they don't, that nothing happens. Well, mm-hmm. in that sense too, they're getting in their own way. Right. So just give your intention over and then enter into it if a if a thought comes to your mind about god then think about it Mm. but don't force it it's not your prayer yeah all of this is like no stress basically right yeah no pressure which i love that (laughs) so just show up to mass no stress no pressure Mm -hmm. and just let the mass pull you in itself like just let just be there just right just fall in love with that i love that any closing thoughts that you have on this topic um, in general, There's, I mean, we could, we could, I mean, I shouldn't the, say that the liter- the liter- closing da- thoughts because we could keep dangerous. talking and talking yeah, and talking yeah, yeah. and talking and do like years of series on this, but sure. we can't do that. But any, any quick closing thoughts you have on that, on this topic? Cause then we're going to have you back for another question okay. after this, we're going to close down this episode and start up a different one with another question for you. But any closing thoughts you have on this, but I'm so thankful. Um, do you have closing thoughts? I mean, I'll fucking try. Go for it, <laughs> no, go for it. I would. Yeah, I might as well say this. Um, the mass is the perfect devotion as well, and this is one of my favorite lines to use. Is um, you know we're called to love the heart of Christ. Where is the heart? It's located in the body. Where is the body? It's the church, 
And what is the heart of the church? It's the liturgy. So in a real sense, to love the Mass, even in a respectful manner, but to love the Mass is to love the heart of Christ. I love that. So just should be present at Mass, and you're present to the heart. Awesome. You'll Perfect. Receive. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Father, for being here. Um, you always expand my mind into um, growing closer to the Lord and in our faith. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. And we're going to be back for another round, another question next time. Thanks, Father. Thanks, Robin. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to like, subscribe, and share Living Lit and reach out with topics you'd like tackled at livinglit at sfcatholic.com. Dot org. And be the light, shine the light, share the light, and live lit.